the Citadel. Like Sicily itself, timeless, mysterious, tragic. This is where he lived and where it happened just one year ago. D.C. Conover, the greatest writer of our time. I've read everything of his, Return to Tarsus, in the shadow of the monolith, that God may weep. One year. She had conquered the world and now returned alone. What are you waiting for? You may go. Senora, you should not have returned. We beg you, leave this place. This place is my home. You may obtain your pay from the bank. But, Senora, surely you must see, know. See. One can only guess her thoughts of that terrible morning. But surely they must have traveled back through time to that other morning, five years earlier, when she first entered the Citadel. Oh, I'm the new secretary. Is Mr. Conover in? Mr. Harris, your Conover is at work. We are instructed to show you through your room. Oh. This way, please. something the lady wishes, perhaps? Just a, a hot bath, thank you. The guests will begin to arrive at nine. Dinner is at midnight. An old Sicilian custom? Custom of Signor Conover. Welcome to the Citadel, Signorina. tourist who went broke on the Riviera and needed a job. Here's a starter. <laughs> this is hardly the place. Now, after your bath, kiddo. You think I want the originals to get wet? One top and two carbons. If you've got any ideas about punctuation or spelling, forget them. Just copy. You ever typed a novel before? No, Mr. Connor. Well, it's easy. Anyone can do it. It's when the paper is blank. You think on that, kiddo. And be warned. My last secretary, bless her antique heart, was thrilled to death to be working for a great writer and meeting so many important people. In two months, I'd aged her ten years. I have the touch. <laughs> Nothing I like better than knocking out a lousy poet. <laughs> and Marco kept cutting and cutting, all the time saying the cruelest things to me. Such as the truth. Getting so anybody can ski there. Just think. If every insect lived within 48 hours, they'd cover the earth to a depth of six feet. Oh, imagine a three million dollar yacht that paid for that. <laughs> He's got to economize. There's no war in sight. How's the book coming, CC? Conover's rules for good writing. One, double space. Two, write on only one side of the paper. Three. All that, and typing too. What's the final rule, CC? Neatness counts. I wish I 
was told we dine at midnight. Or am I to eat with the domestics? We'll be in more select company. Standard issue at Miss Willoughby's secretarial college. I was class valedictorian. Do you disapprove? I? The only thing I disapprove of are children and dogs. If you're trying to impress this lot, you'll misjudge your audience. You can stroll among them clad only in a withered fig leaf. And it wouldn't rate a raised eyebrow. Believe me, it's been dried. Or are you window shopping? I imagine that's why you came to the Riviera in the first place. To land a husband. Well, shall Uncle C.C. play the matchmaker? There, for instance, a titled nobleman, the baronial castle in Bavaria. Some genital idiocy stalking the ancestral halls, or the bearded dreadnought. Please. Is that a blush beneath the pancake? I thought that went out with Jane Austen. I finished the pages. One top and two carbons, they're on your desk. So? So? If it's not presumptuous, here's to your new book. <laughs> I've just raised your salary, Miss Harris. Your talents exceed those of a mere typist. The deft touch of sadism deserves reward. So what did you think? I didn't read, I typed. School goes lie, spare me that. All right. I did read. And I envy you. Someday I'll die and that'll be that, but you, two, three hundred years from now, somewhere, someone will be reading you. You'll never die. Am I to believe that? You mean, are you to believe me? Yes, I suppose that's what I mean. When can I read more? Enjoy your fringe benefits, Miss Harris. So time passed, four months. He wrote until exhausted and slept little. At mid-morning every day, he would walk above the sea. And it was there she would come to him. It's finished. Well, I'll type it up this afternoon and airmail it to New York. The end. And when that's done, so am I, I suppose. You're not paid to suppose, Miss Harris. I'm finished with the book. Not you. I'm going to prove that Tolstoy was written by a serf he kept chained in a shed. And if I want to be finished, I've saved enough money for my passage home. Give up the Citadel, the Dolce Vita, sculptors, racing drivers, movie actors, matadors, opera divas, even an exile Cosa Nostra from Newark. All paying their pious pilgrimage to the Citadel. And you, watching me take them apart like so many dollar watches. Not exactly the world's most enjoyable spectator sport. You love it. Life's short, kiddo. And you're not about to swap this for a drive-in movie and a washer full of diapers. <laughs> well, did you see anything? Well, it's difficult, Signorina. Her gift. There are so few things it does not have. Buongiorno, beautiful lady. I put the. Uh, hey, yes. I can't see the Come on, here. Scusa. One of our 
good for nothing, senorina. I do not buy drinks for Italians. I salute you. I am Sicilian, Sicilianos on you. Worse. But you would like me very much for uh, 50,000 lira. I uh, speak of what is in here. A head, very fine head, a Truscan. Truscan? Come to my hotel in an hour. In an hour, the price is 100,000. In one minute, join me in the passageway behind the farmacia. Buongiorno, signore. Five consecutive pages of what is real would either put the reader to sleep or... The devil's the matter with you? Nothing. Oh, no. You cry every Monday night at 10. The natives regulate their clocks by it. Must you always ridicule people? Oh, why not? To those who feel, life is a tragedy. To those who think, it's a comedy. Come in. Your Conover, special delivery from England. I hope it's not bad news. I've just been made honorary Eagle Scout. Tragedy, not comedy, it's farce. Jimmy next door, tired of waiting for his calico bride. His name isn't Jimmy. Don't argue with me. His name is Jimmy. He has curly hair and gleaming teeth, and he can fix anything with his manly hands. <sighs> you and your 90 million sisters, hooked on appearances, an image. You know what an image is by definition? Not the real thing. Fake, phony. Jimmy's. Why do you hate them so much? Well, isn't it obvious? They breed like hamsters. So young, so healthy. No, we have no contract. Go. You're so worried about losing him. Go now. I'd even charter a plane and drop you in his arms by parachute. You didn't say I wanted to leave. But he is waiting for me. And he does want to marry me. And it's dangerous here. The first day I worshipped you. But I was afraid. I'm still afraid. Later. In less than three months. Of course, there were moments of happiness, but only moments. For she found he bore little resemblance to the heroes of his creations. Going home to Mother? <laughs> A line worthy of me. 
You'll learn quickly. No. I don't learn at all. That's the trouble. And I don't understand. All I know is I hate this. What do you expect? Magic. Well, I thought marriage would change things. Change us, enrich both our lives. And it hasn't? Has it? I don't see how. Still the parties. Still the fan club roasting on the spit. Still C.C. the Great. And who am I? I, I don't know. I, I greet your guests. I fight to elbow my way into their conversations. I, I draft shopping lists, which Manuela invariably changes. I, I follow the gardener about. And you? You're writing your essays with a tape recorder. Apparently, it wasn't marriage you wanted, but promotion. I want something. Anything. I once said I worshipped you, and I do, but that's no life. You rang, Signore? Yeah. Take up entomology. Or better yet, do a piece for one of those fancy women's magazines. My life with CC. But behind every great man, there's a woman. Yes, behind him. Count your blessings, kiddo. You're the envy of every clock-punching nine-to-five secretary who ever dreamed of rubbing shoulders with the gods. And rubbing shoulders, after all, is as much as you're equipped for. Oh, keep pumping my ego. Maybe I'll explode. I realize marrying me has polished up your image, but it scarcely qualifies you to understudy Dorothy Parker. Despite your upgraded social status, beneath the Dior thumps the small and greedy heart of a talentless provincial who furtively dotes on curly-headed jimmies and true confessions. You'll live with that acknowledgement. I am. I'm going to London for a few days. Without telling me. I'm telling you now. Charles. Take me with you, please. You're not packed. I can go as I am. I'll buy some things there. I'll bring you back some tweed. You feel the need for self-expression? Take up sewing. Why in heaven's name did you marry me? I asked you a question, CC. Why? And in a fine, shrill, fishwife's voice, too. Why did I marry you? Well, I thought, what'll she do without me? Jimmy, weekend movies, the divers in the garage, a second mortgage. No, I said to myself, she may not be good enough for me, but she's too good for Jimmy. Let's go. Ah, grazie. Good afternoon, Signor Conover. Are all you Sicilians so shy? Uh, it is said that you do not uh, speak our language well. I could teach you. I am uh, Mario Silvetti and am expertly grammatic. Uh, last year I taught a uh, high-born Roman lady. I'll bet you did. Or I could be your guide. There is Siracusa. I uh, know the capo de mafia there. Non è di tutti che puoi incontrare a Ito. I said the, it is not every American who uh, gets to meet him. Oh, there is Agrigento, with its ancient and beautiful temples. And then not far from here, the... Pleasure, better signora. There! Robert! 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 Do not be.
be afraid, Signora. A case of mistaken identity had I been brought to trial. But one can never be sure. Bedda. Bedda, Marquina, brava. You're just going to sit out there in full view like that? You know, the police must be looking for you by now. Not in uh, Syracuse. <laughs> well, I'm going home. Oh, Syracuse is as white as alabaster, and its waters are so blue. I am going to stop this car, and you are going to get out, or you are going to be in the worst trouble of your life. I would risk it for you, my lady. Adriana, come with me to Syracuse. I am Mario Silvetti will make you feel like a goddess. Have you seen your electric bill? You knew when you came here what the verdict would be. You've known for some time. At least you have a wife to see you through. Yeah. I took care of that, didn't I? When I was a child, I had a fantasy. I'd be the only human being to beat the rap. Then one day, I got the galleys of my first novel. I looked at them, and I knew that I wouldn't. In London, lives New York and Sicily, and a one drugstore town in Iowa, and the Jimmies live. Look at them. Ants. Back and forth. And they thought in their head is payday and a girl. Why not them? It's not their time, Charles. There's so many things I haven't said to paper. And now I never will. Who was it said? Dying is easy, it's living, it's hard. I bet that when his time came, he wanted to revise that. So it comes to an end. And then... After the lion, jackals. Brains aren't everything, my dear Adrian. The blue whale is reputedly a more intelligent mammal than man. But he has yet to produce one line of distinguished Cece. verse. Welcome home. Oh, Cece. Party's over. Find some other trough to swill at. Charles, I want to talk to you. Go away. Not until I've had an explanation. I think I'm entitled to one. Off to London without a word. Where you stayed, I have no idea, no letters, no phone calls, not even a wire telling me when you'd return. Do I mean a drink? No, thank you. I've already had one. A toast to today. You know what today is? The day the party stopped. The day I started my new novel. Novel? What about your essay? I mean, quiet, absolute quiet. I'll sleep in here. You can join me every morning for breakfast. Six. Six? That's how the work gets done. All you wish I was, you talentless parasites. What do you think this is? Dwelling on noble thoughts and hoping that lightning will strike. Minutes became hours. There was rain. 
hours became days. The sun rose. The sun set. Her life was a wasteland. And there seemed no escape. Signora, the master wishes you. To what do I owe the honor of this invitation to the Holy Sanctum? To whom? Our new chauffeur. Mario. think you're doing? A man must work, Caravia. Don't you call me that again, ever. You mean not here, not in the Citadel, but uh, some other place. Syracuse, maybe. You listen to me, Mario Soveri. There's not gonna be another time or another place. It's finished. Diana, why are you so cruel? You know? When I heard of this job in the village, I leaped at the chance to be near you. I will be discreet, as the cats in the night. You will be a chauffeur, that's what you'll be. Nothing more. Signora, permetta. I would be most happy to relieve you of the burden of explaining duties to this new driver. La Signora instructs me because the master wishes it so. Thank you, though, Carlo. It was kind of you to offer. Why do I do this? Because he told me to. This minute, he said. Wash the car. Wash the glasses. Wash the windows. Wash the mirrors. Keep the museum bright and shiny. Oh. I'm so sick of all this nothingness. And are you uh, sick of him? Ah, dear. <laughs> I know. You were a woman of dreams, of ambition. You thought what you saw here was the good life. Now you see it for what it is. It glitters, but it is glass. <coughs> Adrian. Let me show you what life can be. Mario, please, you mustn't. You think this is only talk? It is not. It was an adventure at first, I admit it. But now, for me, it is something more. This you must believe. You don't know how I want to believe. Devon. 
course. Thought you should be the first to know? I was. I am. Always. That's the secret of my success. Oh, I am a good writer. Intuition. For me, kiddo, people have glass heads. Particularly you. What do you mean? Example. At this moment, your pulse rate is over 100. Because you're afraid of what I have in this envelope. I have a feeling your intuition is mostly wild guessing. While I was in London, is that a wild guess? Mario Silvetti. I didn't know his name. But that was simple research, another writer's tool. So what I hold in my hand, the date and the place. You have no proof. Exhibit B. Sophomoric dialogue. You'll be my Jimmy Mario. I want your children. For us, it will always be Syracuse. All right. You know. Well, you should have known before it happened. I asked you. I pleaded with you to make me a life. What choice did you give me? The addict's alibi. I was driven to it. Well, you say what you like, you think what you like. I still want a divorce. In the face of this? I only want one thing from you. Out. No money, no property, just out of your sight. Pay for effort, sweetheart. Too bad. You fail the course. The beginning of wisdom is knowing where to look for it. Last week, a German tourist returned home, having abandoned hope of bringing his assailant to justice. Very interesting, I'm sure. You will listen! Since World War II, the German has occupied a special place in the Sicilian heart. The local questura, therefore, has shrunk and forgotten the matter. The assailant is Mario Silvetti. And if you insist on this divorce, I will have him imprisoned for five years. Oh. I hate you, and you know that. Why won't you let me go? Why do you torture us? Jimmy! There was no Jimmy. I wanted you, so I invented him and the tears that went with him, and I was Mrs. C.C. Conover. <laughs> I told you, kiddo. You're out of your league. Ambition, but no real substance. I knew there was no Jimmy. He was in your mind. But he's real now, isn't he? Isn't he? I don't believe it. I get what I want, Kira. Always. And what I want is that no Jimmy will ever have you. Repeat. Ever. <laughs> How's that for immortality? Muriel. Say it. He is himself. It's as though he can read my mind. Every thought I've had, he's been there ahead of me. Adrian. You love me. You know I do. And I love you. And stands between. Tomorrow, at mid-morning, you will be gathering roses in the garden. It is important you be seen. Why, Mario? Walks by the cliff.
What are you doing here, Mario? I wish to speak to you, Signore. You're more nervous than I am. Just like a Jimmy. You have no words, Mario. The words are mine. Come on, young and handsome Jimmy. No. Do it now! It doesn't end here. You... You go too. You... Jimmy! A million pardons, Signora, in your time of sorrow. I am Luigi Boniface. Perhaps you heard of me. I was honored to have dealings with your late husband. Rest his noble soul. I am an advocate, what you call an attorney. Well, I'll be happy to help you if I can. It will be appreciated. My purpose in coming is to prepare you for the inquest this morning. Prepare me? Yes. You see, there is an unusual aspect to his tragic death. So your Conover delivered this to me less than an hour before his last walk. It is a medical report with x-rays from a London hospital. Your Conover was determined to have been in a terminal condition of carcinoma. Cancer. Terminal? The diagnosis was made six months ago. This was final confirmation. But then he knew he was dying when he met me. See, and all those years preceding, and never to marry, never to let a woman enter his heart. For him, it was only his work. And when death stalks, then suddenly there is another need. You want to be able to reach out and seize another's hand. No, there is caring in that grip. Then, to be alone is intolerable, without dignity. You made his dying endurable, senor. And he was not without gratitude for your loyalty, your devotion. Gratitude? You did not know? In the matter of your husband's will, you are to receive without reservation all his wealth and worldly goods. Holy Bella. Adrian Cano, love you. Yes, and rich. George, I'd like to have a party. Oh, what a striking man. La ragazza. She carries her grief like a true thoroughbred. No, I simply can't wait to what tell my neighbors. I sat next to Mrs. C.C. Cano. Tourists came. To see, almost to worship her grace and beauty. The villagers call her the tragic lady. Una bellezza, guarda un po', che bella ragazza. At the citadel, she was now a queen, and all came to pay court. It was as if the blazing sun of Signor Conover, in winking out, had revealed another sun obscured until now by the brilliance of its departed rival. I don't know. Beer, it seemed a little tacky this year. What can we expect? Europe on the installment plan. <laughs> Tourists thick as flies. In your absence, Adrian, dear, they buzzed around here. <laughs> well, you can't begrudge them that. Even in his life, he was a legend. What are your plans now, Adrian? Oh, I don't know. I haven't had time to think. The New York people have been pressuring me to do a book about C.C., and I simply have to finish the preface for the trilogy they reissued. Then the pressure for the interviews and the momentous, do you know that somebody actually asked me for a shoelace? <laughs> Mario was forgotten. But Mario did not forget. Adrian. What about us? Please try to understand. Come, oh, I try. For months I have tried. 
It was for you I killed him. And now, each night, I think, if we only had waited, there would have been no need of the cliff. It was for us I killed him. Now, what about us? Nothing's changed. You're wrong, Mario. Things have changed. Surely you realize who... No. Better yet, what I've become? Andreano, you are still Andreano. No. I am the widow of C.C. Conover, an international celebrity. What would you have me do? Close down the citadel, marry you, and start raising bambinos? What are you saying? Surely you see, Mario. I have an obligation to the world. People expect me to behave in a certain way. Indeed, they have the right to demand it. And posterity. I have an obligation to that, too. As the custodian of C.C.'s memory, Posterity demands that I not corrupt it or my role in it. Buonasera, signora. Ape Regina, I say. Queen of the Beast. You drink with Mario. Drink with Mario. Get him out of here now. Anziano, come with me. Come with me. Charming people, the Italians. But children. Full of fear and frustration. We must be tolerant. told the name of his betrayer. He did not ask, for he knew. Mario said but a single word, guilty, and did not speak anymore. Shortly after his imprisonment, she closed the citadel and traveled. Uh, that was France, Switzerland. <laughs> and so years passed, five in all. Until, on that terrible morning, the gates of Catania prison opened. Catania is 38 kilometers to the south. It did not take him long. Five years. A cold cell and poor food. And a mind on fire with revenge. <laughs> Listening, Adriana. Yes, yes. It is not him you want, but me. What I can give you, real things. Oh, children. Children. And the love of a strong young man. Mario. Listen. Yes, I want to be Jimmy's wife. Jimmy? Just an in-joke of the literary set. I've played it a thousand times. You're my Jimmy, Mario. to die, and he will live forever. At the end, it 
was discovered that his weapon was empty. How dreadful. But, but why did she come back? I realize she hoped he would forgive her, but... Why did she not run, Signora? Or hide? I've asked myself that many times. Yes, she would be alive today. And so would Mario. But my friends, the lion had it otherwise. Signorina Harris, tourist, secretary, she could have disappeared without a trace. But not the distinguished widow of Signor Conover. That was his triumph. He gave her her dream, knowing that she was not worthy of it. Knowing that even as he lay in the blackness of his tomb, would kill her and would kill her. <laughs> 